Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yeah. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. And I thank God for the Word. I know yes. you're thrilled with the Word, excited about the Word. Yes. And just know this, one of the most joyous things I get to do is to be able to come and teach this Word to you. Yes. And um, so thank you for loving the Word. Yes. And not we're not only good hearers, we're good doers of this word. Amen. Uh, we've been on a series that I believe will be a blessing to you. We're ministering out of my book called The Price of the Double Portion Anointing. In this, I don't want you to be misled by the title. I, I recognize that not everyone will walk under a double portion of anointing because not everyone needs to. But I will also say this is that we're reminded that there is an anointing that abides in every believer. Yes. And we want want that anointing to have its greatest effect in our life. So we have to cooperate with it. This book teaches us how to cooperate with the anointing of God that's within every single believer. Amen. And so we invite you go back and watch previous episodes. We've already spent much time ministering on this. And um, this series came out of, as I said, this book and um, the book talks about something that Jesus, um, I had an experience when he visited me and he talked to me about the price of the double portion anointing. And so we have referred to what Jesus said to me while I was in St. Petersburg, Russia is when this happened in my hotel room. And um, we have already in previous episodes taught about what Jesus said in that in that experience. We're going on further now in these upcoming episodes, um, talking about the next morning, the Holy Ghost said some things to me. And so we're emphasizing what he brought out. So we trust it'll be a blessing to you. Get hold of something to take notes on because we're believing God to speak to you. Amen. And so we're, as I said, go back, watch previous episodes because there's so much that we've already said that we don't really have time to restate again. So uh, we were talking about the wisdom of God. The Holy Spirit said to me, uh, one, of the, one of the first things, not the only, sa- only thing he said, but the thing we're focusing on right now. Um, the Holy Spirit said to me to walk in the double portion anointing. It calls for great wisdom, great consecration, great discipline of the spirit over the mind and body and great accuracy. So there's more he said, but this is the section we've been camping on. And uh, when we talk about great wisdom, it's great wisdom in every arena. Amen. So it's going to be spiritually, mentally, physically, materially. Now we have just started touching in on walking in wisdom in the home. Uh, let's talk about it just briefly touch on this again. Walking in wisdom in the home for a marriage is this renewing the mind. You have to, it's easier to conduct your marriage when your mind is renewed and you are easier to live with. When your mind is renewed with the word and you are going on through your furthering, renewing your mind all the time. None of us ever arrive. We just keep further renewing our mind. And um, so I would just say husbands and wives keep renewing your minds with the word. What's that mean? Be a doer of the word. Find out what God says. 
come into, come into line with his thinking and then let that thinking show up in your everyday life. Can I say this? Um, the, the public should not get a better version of us than the home gets. Yes. Amen. 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 Spirituality is, is really most accurately displayed or let's say this, not spirituality, but our spiritual maturity yes. is most recognized in the home. Mm-hmm. Yes. We can appear to be spiritually more mature than we are for a short time out in public. Yes. <laughs> but the home is going to reveal. Yes. Yes. And so pay attention to how you conduct living in the home because that is the place where our spiritual maturity is most evident or our spiritual immaturity is most evident. We're all at different levels of spiritual growth. None of us have arrived. It's a process, but don't go to just how you might treat the stranger on the road to define if you're making an advancement or not. Look to the home. What is going on in the home life? How am I handling those of my home? How am I handling and responding and thinking toward and speaking to those within the home? Because that's the place where, where if I could say this, the rubber meets the road, yes. right? And we, we want to know this. Our family should get the best version of us because they spend the most time with us. Yes. Yes. Amen. And, um, so it, this is just a, this is just part of us growing up. Mm-hmm. It's just part of us growing up, paying attention to how we're responding within the home. It matters. Yeah. When we see how we respond in the home, now we know what to address in our spiritual life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If someone has anger issues, if they have ways of speaking a tone that isn't right, they're, you know, they're impatient. These, when we see this operating in the home regarding us, now we have our assignment. Yeah. Amen. Just pay attention and do your assignment. So that's what basically we've been referring to in previous episodes. But let's go a little bit further. Uh, the, the home overall for it to receive the greatest flow, that happens, number one, when we're renewing our minds with the word, but also when we're carrying out the plan of God for that family, yes. that home. That means the the husband and wife interested in the plan of God and bringing the children into the flow of that plan. The children are not the plan. They are part of the plan. They don't make your children the center of everything. Uh, The plan of God is the center. The word of God is the center. And we bring everything in to help facilitate the the plan of God and the word of God being carried out in our lives and in our home. Amen. Amen. The best thing anyone can do for their family is to follow the plan of God and teach that to your children. Absolutely. The plan of God is not optional. It's mandatory for the best life for the highest flow of life. Amen. Sometimes when you're following the plan of God in your home and in your life, your home can look different than someone else's home. Don't go to Hollywood and let television or movies decide what your home should look like. Go to the plan of God. Because people can get, if I could say this, an unrealistic picture by looking at television or movies and saying, I want my home to look like that. No, we want our home to look like the word. We want our home to look like the plan of God. And let me clarify even further what I mean by that. My husband was called to the traveling ministry. It was not my job to try to keep him home. It was my job to help him succeed at what he was called to do. And everything of that home was to facilitate that plan. Amen. So that meant our home life looked different. We were not cheated. It was not a less than life, but it looked different based on the plan of God for our family. Amen. Amen. So be aware of that. Don't just think your home has to look like everyone else's. It needs to look like the word and it needs to look like the plan of God for your family, for your life. Amen. Um, I loved my husband enough not to try to keep him home, but to 
help him fulfill the plan of God for his life. That's how I loved him best, was helping him fulfill the plan, not trying to keep him home to myself. Amen. 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 I didn't try to make him like other husbands Mm -hmm. or like other households. I wanted him like the plan of God for him. That's how I loved him. Amen. I didn't put pressure on him that my home has to look like the neighbor, that my home has to look like other people's homes. No, my my home needs to look like the plan of God for our life. Amen. I did not, for me, this is just me, I did not pressure him to be home on certain holidays. If he wasn't home for my birthday, no big deal. Send me money. (laughs) I will go buy my birthday present and I will thank you all the way. And I recognize because my husband is obeying the plan of God, I get to buy me a birthday present. I know different people are different. That's not scripture, so to speak. But I'm just saying the mindset I carried. The mindset we carry within the home, in the marriage, in the family matters to the peace of that home. Because we can have a mindset that disrupts the home, causes strife, and a mindset of wanting the spouse and family members to read your mind. That doesn't work. That's not even fair to anyone in the home that they don't respond because they didn't, they don't respond to you because they weren't able to read your mind. Mm -hmm. That's not even fair. That's not even scriptural. (laughs) You know what the word says about you and God? He knows every thought you have, but he said you have not because you ask not. He still knows Uh what you're thinking, Uh but he doesn't have permission to fulfill your desire till you ask him, till you release faith. So we, God says, even though I know everything you think, Uh I know where you're at in every facet of your life. You have not because you ask not. So if God says with him all knowing, we still have to ask, don't you think it's appropriate to at least let inform people in our home what it is that we're thinking? Yes, that's right. If we're expecting them to do something, fulfill something in the home, don't you think it's only fair to tell that, let them communicate that rather than expect them to read the, our minds and then get un- upset because they didn't read our mind and didn't do what we thought they should do? It's not even fair. It's a mindset that has to be right. So my mindset was my husband did not get a cold shoulder from me if he wasn't home on my birthday because I was just thanking him for the, the gift I, I got. <laughs> Now, you might like buying your, your wife a gift, your husband a gift, and doing it yourself personally. That's fine. I like shopping for myself because I don't have to return it then. Right. I know I'm going to enjoy it. I know it's going to work. Right. That was just my mindset. And you know what? I got 364 other days of the year that I can spend with my husband and, and go out to dinner for my birthday, whatever. I'm just saying that was the mindset of the home because I didn't want my mindset set to put a grudge in our home, having a grudge toward a spouse because they're not doing something. I mean, you say, what about holidays, big holidays like Thanksgiving or Christmas? There, you know what? The, it's not the day that makes the, the day special. It's the people celebrating the day. So just us being together whenever, that was my mindset. You know what? If God tells you to be somewhere on a certain date, no problem. Uh, We'll celebrate when you get home. Amen. I didn't create issues in my home. There are enough issues that arise just by being in the world without creating them within your own home from an offended approach or a, a mindset that puts pressure on people. Amen. But I will say this. My husband was so considerate of the home. He was considerate of his family. He was aware that if he wasn't able to be home like other people might have been home more, he, was, he paid attention to his family. Just because out of sight, we weren't out of his mind. Because there's that phrase, out of sight, out of mind, that was not true in our marriage. He was constantly in communication with me and the children because we were in his thoughts. And so he was highly considerate of the home. And um, it worked. We worked it out ourselves. You have to work out the own, your own system that works in your home based on the will of God for your family. Amen. I'm just saying this. I valued the plan of God more than I valued a holiday 
or a birthday or an anniversary. Many times we weren't together on our anniversary. No problem, just send me money. <laughs> I'll go buy my, my anniversary gift. That will not offend me at all. I'll be, and you know what? If you won't, I can double it. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I mean, we got to be together. The plan of God was what's fulfilled me. Amen. 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 And I tell you what, the plan of God never cheated us. It never cheated our family and it never cheated our children. No. Yeah. Amen. Yes. But there again, we followed the word, but we also followed the leading of the spirit. Yes. Amen. Yes. How the spirit led our family. That's what we stayed with. Right. Amen. Amen. If my children asked and, and as they got older, this was never a question, but when they were younger, they would say, maybe ask, where's daddy? Is he going to be home tonight or whatever? I made it clear to them um, that while he was out obeying God, I was at home helping him obey God. Yes. Meaning this, I wasn't yes. saying, I don't know why your dad's not here. No, I knew why my, his, their dad wasn't here. He was out obeying God. I said, your dad is out obeying the plan of God and that blesses the whole family in every location. Yes. He's blessed on the road and we're blessed here yes. and we're not being deprived because God will always reward us for obedience. Yes. Always. I never allowed them to adopt the mindset that they were being cheated because our family setup looked different than others. I taught them our family looks like the will of God. It looks like God's plan for our family. And I taught them that. And I taught them obedience to God's plan is what blessed the family, not someone being in the household. Because you can be in the household and out of the plan of God and it can destroy a family. Yes. Amen. Just being out of the plan of God opens the door to the enemy. Yes. And I let them know, your daddy's keeping us safe by obeying God. Right. Your daddy doesn't have to be present in this house to be keeping this family safe. It's the plan of God and the word of God and the will of God that keeps us safe. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you have to define that in your own home and keep the right mindset toward that. Amen. Never use your words to divide your home or to get your children, uh, to get one, your children, if I could say this, siding against a parent. Uh -huh. Never use your children to stack your deck. That means don't try to get them on your team against someone else in the household. Amen. We are one. We are one. We're all on the same team. We're not ever going to, we never allowed the 50 yard line in our home. What's that mean? Uh, part on one, on one end of the field and part of the family on the other end of the field and trying to win their own way. No, no, no. We're on everybody. We're on that 50 yard line moving together. Amen. So because of, because of right thinking in your home, it cuts off um, opportunities for the enemy to cause problems in the home. Mm -hmm. Have right thinking. Right. Amen. Because know this, in the home, it's never about one person. It's always about the family. Mm -hmm. It's always about the unit. Mm -hmm. It's not about one person getting their way. Mm -hmm. It's not about one person getting all the attention. We do what's best for everyone in the home. Yes. Amen. Uh, we never had a big problem with our, with our sons. We have two sons, my husband and I together, and um, there were never big problems. There was just the daily training that went on. There was the daily correction. There was the daily discipline, but there was never the crisis moments with our sons. Amen. Because my husband was gone a lot, that meant that I had to pay particular attention, but I was graced to pay yes. particular attention. Yes. I was not put upon mm -hmm. in an inappropriate or inconvenient way because he was gone. Great. God graced me yes. to be home with the children while he was graced to be on the road. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. So that meant this. I, I had to bring the correction mm -hmm. and the direction. I couldn't wait for daddy to come home and do it all or there would be gaps in their training. Right. right. So I was present. That meant I doled out the discipline. I had no problems doing that. Mm 
<laughs> I had no problems correcting them. Why? Because I paid attention. And I knew this, the more I handle them rightly, the sweeter their life goes and the sweeter my life goes. If I ignore problems in the home, that's when you have issues that show up all along the way. Yes, yes. This is called wisdom in the home. Yes. This is connected to um, walking out the plan of God and it's connected to the anointing of God getting its proper expression in your home is you have to walk in wisdom in the yes. home. I could not just say to my children, wait till your daddy gets home, he'll correct this. Oh no, I was home, I'm correcting this. I didn't want that when my husband came home that we all met him with a door, met him at the door with a pile of problems he had to correct the moment he walked in the house. No, they're corrected so he could come home and be refreshed. He, I, didn't, I didn't adopt the mentality, you've been gone, now they're yours. No, he's been gone too. He's been working too. He needs to come home and refresh. He does not need to come home and me unload something and try to say, well, I've had them all this time. It's your turn now. No, I'm not trying to measure. You start measuring and things can look in, um, they can look unequal in the natural on some things. Amen. Amen. I had larger segments of time with the children, but that didn't mean he had to make up for those segments of time and me get relieved from it. No, when he comes home, I'm not dumping. I wasn't dumping my responsibilities on him because he had been away. Now I want him to come home and be refreshed too. The home is to be a place of refreshment, not yes. one of shifting responsibilities. We do everything we can to help each other run refreshed. Yes. Amen. 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 I loved being a mom. I wanted to be with them as much as I could. Uh, yes, I had help in the home and it was a blessing. But much of the time I took the children to the office with me. And Thankfully, I had the setting as the administrator of this ministry that I had the opportunity to keep my children with me. Every home doesn't have that. I understand that. Sometimes people have jobs and they're not able to be with their children. You, you be led by how the Spirit leads you. Right. Amen. Amen. But I will say this, even though I had help in the home at times, I was not looking for someone else to be their mother. No. That's the truth. Only I could do that. Right. I wasn't looking to shift my, my responsibilities. As a woman in ministry, my first responsibility was still my family. Yes. Yes. My, that, is the plan of, that is the plan of God for me yes. and for every woman, that responsibility. You say, well, I have a call. Well, you, you first have a call to tend to that family. That's right. Amen. 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 And not neglect the family and help and then you can uh, more fully fulfill the will of God when the family's intact. Uh -huh. right. yes. Now, um, there's a whole bunch of questions that people could raise up on that. But I was married to a man who wanted me to fulfill the call of God on my life. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. So I wanted him to fulfill God's plan. He wanted me to fulfill what God had for my life. Mm -hmm. But we first put what God had for the family. You understand that. Yes. And um, so I, I was pastoring mm -hmm. at the time. I was administrating the offices, plus I traveled part-time with my husband. So I would fulfill the ministry, but I also made sure before I did things at the office, before I left the home to go to the office to make sure everything was in order in the home. Mm -hmm. I could not neglect my children mm -hmm. and fulfill the plan of God right. and every, every arena of my life be blessed. I had to walk in wisdom. Yes. Yes. And I did not want my, my home not to be the example. I wanted my home to be an example. Yes. And so we all want that, yes. don't we? We all yes. want that. Yes. So that means I could not neglect my home uh -huh. because I was a pastor. God graced me for everything he yes. called me to do. Now, if I'm taking on things that he didn't call me to do, that's going to rob from me. Uh -huh. But if, I, if, I, if I'm clear and accurate on what he called me to do, then I could fulfill what he called me to do uh, by his grace mm -hmm. and yes. his ability. Amen. 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 And um, it was just a blessing to be able to, to serve. It was a blessing in the home. Um, I love being in the home and I love being in the offices. I loved it. I loved it all. 
Amen. Um, another reason we did not have problems with our children is number one, I paid attention. Mm -hmm. I was present and I, uh, I didn't turn the, the mothering mm -hmm. over to someone else. Mm -hmm. For me, I was able to do that. Yes. Um, but also I kept them in the local church. Mm -hmm. My husband and I kept our children in the local church. Yeah, right. That means that they were not out doing school functions, sports functions when it's, it was church time. Mm -hmm. Why? I need them where the anointing can reach them. Yes. You say, well, the anointing of God is everywhere. Yes, but it's not manifesting everywhere. Yeah. And there is an anointing in the church family yes. that yes. is not present in my home. I need my children to have the anointing that's in my home, but I need them under the anointing of a local church yes. and of that, yes. that, uh, that corporate faith uh -huh. of the church family. Mm -hmm. Because when I keep them in the local church, then I'm keeping them in the place where the anointing of God can always minister to them. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. It's not wrong on, a, on occasion, on occasion when we weren't able to be there for, because of some um, critical appointment, you know, we, we're not, we're not legalistic about it, but our, but our standard was the local church comes first. Amen. Amen. Um, also I closely guarded their fellowship. Mm -hmm. Um, I paid attention yeah. who you hanging out with, yeah. who, who you, who you talking to, yeah. what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I brought people, their friends. I loved having their friends in our home mm -hmm. because that's part of, that's part of the family life yes. that we enjoyed together. Yes. And so, um, these were just some of the things that were a blessing in our life. Number one, I, I kept them in the local church. Mm -hmm. Number two, I watched their fellowship. Yes. Number three, I paid attention. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. This is called wisdom in the home. Yes. Amen. Amen. And uh, so these kinds of things help us, don't they? Yes. To, to, hear, to hear how God deals with us in yes. these matters. Well, we've been teaching out of my book called The Price of the Double Portion Anointing. We want you to get your copy. You can get your copy by going to JesusTheHealer.org and you can purchase your copy there. And um, not only will it be a blessing to you, I believe it'll be a blessing to someone else. So you may want to pick up a copy for someone else. Amen. And uh, thank God He's helping us. He's, he's teaching us and we're learning and we're going further so we can cooperate with him to a greater way. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. Come join us for our Jesus the Healer Crusade in Fresno, California at Elite Event Venue located at 4105 West Fig Garden Drive, Fresno, California, 93722. The dates are March 25th through the 29th. For more information and to register, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. Come expecting miracles. In this book, The Price of the Double Portion Anointing, it instructs those in the ministry, but also brings instruction to every believer in helping them to fulfill the will of God for their lives. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. We invite you to join us for our annual prayer conference here at World Harvest Church in Marietta, California, April 9th through the 11th. We would like everyone attending to pre-register on our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. We invite you to join us at World Harvest Church, home of Dufresne Ministries in Marietta, California, located at 23109 Palomar Street, Marietta, California. This is a word and spirit church. Join us in person or online Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific time. For more information, go to DufresneMinistries.org.